everyone. I see more, even more people have joined. Um, we're just going to wait a couple more minutes to kind of let everybody settle in. We do see the numbers increasing surely but slowly. So also happy Friday. Thank you for joining us on the end of your week. <laughs> we'll make it worthwhile, hopefully. Ronnie, I was just thinking, I don't know if anyone on the webinar here follows us on Instagram at Trello app, but we've been doing Instagram lives on Fridays and we run an elevator music soundtrack in the background. And I was just thinking we should have run that for this. <laughs> we'll have to do that next time. Such a good idea. I could hum a song, but that's not in my job description. We have some things in the Q&A. Thank you. Like raindrops keep falling. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, someone asked about, um, commented on our backgrounds. We wanted to do all of the teachers out there proud and find, find a background that made you feel like you were back in the physical classroom. Uh, today we were just talking with some of our teammates and um, one of them, their partner is a teacher and she's like, do you guys have chalkboards? And he was like, um, absolutely not. We all have whiteboards now. <laughs> right, okay. So this is when we were last in school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, I think, you know, let's start. I think we've seen like kind of a stable number right now. So hello everyone, thanks for joining. Um, I am gonna share my keynote so you, can read our names. I think that'll be really helpful. I do wish we had elevator music as transitioning is always a little awkward. All right, let's jump into this. So thank you for joining us, everyone. Um, my name is Ronnie. I'm on the Trello brand team and I'm the content and social media manager for Trello. I've been at Trello for approximately two years now and anything on social media you've seen kind of goes back to our team and myself. So really excited to be here and tell you all things teachers. Um, I think this is a really important time to talk about it and we're thrilled. And the other screen is my colleague, Leah. Yeah, hi everyone, uh, my name is Leah Ryder. I am the brand marketing team lead here at Trello. So what's really interesting about what we do is we get to talk to users all the time. As Ronnie mentioned on social, we run the blog. If you ever read our newsletters, they're, they come from Taco. Um, and if we had a dog that could write them for us, that would be amazing. Um, but we do do the newsletters as well. But we do talk to users all the time. And we've been getting really inspired in the last couple months by all the teachers out there that are teaching from their homes. Uh, a colleague of mine, or friend of mine who's a teacher has been using his bathtub wall to as a whiteboard. And so we wanted to put together this webinar today to talk about how um, teachers everywhere can use Trello um, to teach from anywhere. It's amazing. And um, before we get started, there's some features. So we do have a Q&A button, so feel free to answer questions. Um, Lee and I will be taking turns kind of speaking about different facets of Trello. So one of us will be monitoring the Q&A. So go ahead, ask questions. Um, more than happy to make this interactive. So let's jump into it. Um, today's agenda, we're going to be going through a big thing, which I think is um, a BC free trial for teachers. And then we have two planning boards. We have a communication board, um, and then we have two boards um, talking about kind of faculty and how to handle your team. And last but never least, we are Trello. We have so many resources. So we're gonna share like a tip of the iceberg with them, uh, of them with you, and then we'll be sharing more links as well to help you. So, First things first, um, we're all in some sort of device, trello.com backslash education, very easy to remember, very easy to type in. We highly encourage all of you and your colleagues to check this out. Um, 
not only because we have many boards on there, Trello boards that you can copy and use for your classroom, but we also have a small thank you to teachers um, that we're offering right now through Trello, which is a free year of Trello business class. And um, Leah will be talking about this a little bit more in depth in terms of examples later, but this just offers a lot more flexibility. You get unlimited power-ups, you're getting just really everything for Trello. So we think this is the best way for you to interact with you know, your students, your colleagues. So please, please, we encourage you to take advantage of this. Um, we're super excited. So trello.com backslash education. We'll be looping back to this, but also feel free to check it out on your own time. So as my queen, Rihanna says, work, 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 work. It's all we're doing is what we're doing, we're at work right now. But Trello, we have a different component, which is plan, 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 plan. If that was not our MO, I don't know what would be. As educators, this is a large part of what you do as well, as, you know, at least as what I remember my teachers being. They would always be planning. So we're gonna start out today with a lesson planning template. So if you're, you, if you're new to Trello, um, I will be going through some basics, but if you want to follow, follow along, it's bit.ly backslash lesson plan Trello. And let's look into it. Um, is my screen showing all right? Are we seeing a Trello board? Awesome. Okay. So first things first, you, you will see this in all our um, templates right now. You see this, it's like create board from temp template. So what this basically does is you get to put that board um, right on your account. Um, let's see, let's start. So if you want to create a board, you can go into a team. I'll go into the cleaning company. So this way I can make changes to this and it doesn't really affect anything. So some terminology I'm going to be using. So lists and cards. Um, again, if you're new to Trello, these are the two main facets of our product. So these are all lists, which you can move, you know, which any way you want. And the subsets in, in them are cards. So which you can also move from list to list. The names can be edited um, and so can the names of each card. So to access information to each card, you just very intuitive, you click inside it. And looking at this, this is a lesson planning board. Now, you know, we have quarters in a year. Hopefully we're not all stuck in remote learning for a year. Um, if that's what you're used to, great. We'd love some pointers. But um, this is a great way, I think, to kind of map out and zoom out what you're talking about. Um, it's also a great way to kind of share with your colleagues of how you're teaching your, um, teaching your students, how you're organizing your classroom. And within this board, um, one thing I want to point out for sure is the use of these labels. So you see, you know, different topics here. So multiplication, grading, geometry. Um, the great thing about labels is there's patterns on them. So they are colorblind friendly, if that is um, something that would benefit, you know, you or your colleagues. Um, and you can also kind of minimize it to lessen the clutter. But we love this idea just because it really helps with what you're learning about. So for example, if quarter three, you're like, you know what, we're not really gonna do any geometry, you can simply move it over, very easy to do. Now in this board, you can also see um, card comments. So for multiplication, for example, you can go in, um, you have some objectives here. You can also edit this, you can add some more, something like, keep in mind, these kids are smart. You can have comments in there to make sure people kind of know what what you're doing and how you're doing it. And this is also great because year after year, you can keep this board. So if one quarter or one semester, something worked really great or something didn't work as planned, you can make a note of it. And so this is a great living, breathing board year after year that you can tweak based on the needs of your classroom. So let's go on to the next one, which is, this was more of a zoomed out version. So now we're gonna zoom a little in. So you have your quarters planned out, but day to day, week to week, this is a, something I think a bit more relatable to right now, because again, hopefully we're not indoors the entire time. So this is a bit in depth. So with this one, um, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna create a board from a template. And again, the bit.ly's are on the presentation, I'll repeat them right after. 
Uh, okay, we're gonna create a template. We're gonna put it in green company again. And what this does is like, this is lets me create a new board. So this is actually, we'll get into templates later, but templates um, is a Trello feature which allows you to make a template and then people can copy it with the key things intact without having to mess up your data. And um, it's also great for teaching with um, teaching and talking to parents, which they'll, we'll hit on later. So weekly planning. So we have a beginning of term and an end of term list that we recommend. And that's a great way to bookend kind of your year or your month or whatever time span you are planning. In this particular board, you'll see, again, another use case of labels. I'm gonna get a little bit more detailed into labels right now. So the great thing with labels, they're easy to make. So on every card, you have this right-hand side kind of hub of all these buttons and labels is one of the many. So if we, these are, these have no names on them, but we can start making names. So week one, let's go back to the math example we had earlier. So if I want to name something geometry and make it green, we now have a geometry label that is green. Um, labels are easy to take off, go in and uncheck mark it. And then you click out, you will see that it's there. And if you want two green labels, but one the you know one with a actual term in it, you can do that too. So we're very flexible with just the ways you can kind of identify things. Next thing I want to get into within this card in particular is one of my favorite things is checklists. So you'll see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items in this checklist, which in this lesson plan card, you'll see on the front of the card, those seven items are exactly reflected. So as you go in and create more things, um, more things, even more things, this number does automatically update immediately. So you can always have these micro tasks accounted for. You don't have like a million cards on a board that makes it a bit overwhelming. Now, when you're making these checklists, you can also have more than one checklist. So this is a lesson plan checklist. You could even have, um, you know, things, things to note. You could have other checklists in here too. So you can make multiple lists for yourself. As you go through each item, you'll see a progress bar. And that also, if you look on this end, that also gets noted off. So that's something we love. Um, fun little fact, as you go down, ready? They all wiggle a bit. <laughs> it's a fun little fact. It won't really affect your productivity, but it does make it more fun to use. So we have that lesson plan checklist. Um, for checklists, you can also copy items from a checklist. So it's not that week after week, you have to make the same thing over time. So I can actually show you a brand new example. So if we're doing week two of your plan, right? So week one was like first week of stay in place orders. You need to have a new Less, you know, you need a new um, plan for your life. So you could even do, you could do new plan. And if you need some of the same checklist items, you can go to checklist, copy items from lesson plan. And the same checklist from the previous card that we had will show up. So it's a really handy way to make sure that everything you're doing is just kept in one spot and you don't have to worry about it week after week. So this particular weekly planning board was actually created by a user of ours who's an educator. So um, we took a cue and just thought this would be a great board to share. And again, this being a template, you can customize this based on your students' needs. So for example, if you are an educator for multiple grade levels or multiple subjects, you're gonna have different weekly plans. So this is a, a particular favorite of mine because the way I actually structure my work day and work weeks is similar to this. Um, I will go back to this. And again, if you want to um, access this particular board, it's bit.ly backslash teaching weekly Trello. You can also find this on our um, trello.com backslash education landing page. So next, I'm going to have Leah take over and I'm going to stop sharing. My We're going board. to do the sharing handover. Sharing handover. And as we do this, I'm going to take a peek into the Q&A. Are there any integrations with G Suite 
education. Not, sp not specifically the education, um, but we do have power-ups, which again, with this um, BC free trial, power-ups are like just like these superpower integrations you can use with your boards. We do have like a, we have a Google Drive integration. So you can easily uh, copy and paste your um, Google Doc and Google Drive links in there and see them. You know what, Ronnie, I'll take a tour of that while we're, uh, we're doing the, the tour here. Can you see my screen? Yeah, looks great. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I'm happy to show off the Google um, integrations that we do have. I think with Google Education, there's some components like classroom and assignments. We do not have direct power up integrations with those, but I actually think it's an excellent suggestion. So we're happy to pass that along. Um, but I'll show you the, the, the Google integrations that we do have. Um, parents. So let's talk a little bit about parents. Um, we've all had some. Uh, some of us are some. And as teachers, you know, um, God bless you all, you work a lot with parents. And we actually think that Trello is a great tool to coordinate with parents. The reason that we think so is we have two kind of main goals with Trello. Um, we want to focus on cutting down on those on the chaos of communication. I'm sure with your parents, you're getting a lot of one-to-one -one emails, a lot of one-to-one -one phone calls, and that can take up a lot of time. Whereas with Trello, we think there's a, there's a way to have kind of one source of truth, one place where you can go to, to share a, a lot of information at one time and hopefully kind of cut down on a lot, a lot of that one-to-one -one communication. But we really do want to focus on keeping your community close keeping uh, your parents informed and hopefully just make that a little bit easier for you. So the idea is to have a regular update system. Um, so the first template we're going to talk about related to this is a weekly classroom newsletter. Um, I wanted to mention with these templates, um, we've obviously had a hand in crafting these. But we've taken inspiration from teachers that are using Trello and actually a, a lot of these were submitted by teachers to our templates gallery. So if any of you also out there are Trello super users, you're also welcome to go to our templates gallery, which Ronnie will show in a minute, and submit your own templates that we can add to the education section there. So let's take a look around the weekly classroom newsletter template board. Hopefully you can still see my screen. I obviously have Friday anxiety about this. Looks great. Okay, great. So I'm gonna move this to a different team so we can play around on it. It's thinking today. Great. What we have here is a Trello board that's organized lists by weeks. And then in each week, what we would have would be all of the items that you would want to communicate with parents related to that week. Um, one feature that we have on here, which I love, are due dates. So in this board, the due dates are functioning as the date that either the item would be due or the day that the, the event is happening. Um, obviously, we built this board last year in October when things were happening in a school but I could easily see this being really useful as well for remote learning. Um, Ronnie's giving you a full tour, tour of labels, but you can use labels here to flag important updates for homework assignments. And then with the um, due dates, you can use power-ups. So one power-up that was great with due dates is actually our most popular power-up, and that's calendar. The way that you access power-ups is in the right-hand menu and it'll take you to our Power Ups directory. We have over 135 different Power Ups with um, third party, but also native integrations like the calendar. So with the business class subscription that you can get for free right now, you can have unlimited Power Ups, which really turns your board into kind of a custom app with all the different features you might need. So once you add calendar to your board, it's going to actually show up a little button here that flips the view of this board from boards list cards into surprise a calendar. I'm going to have to pop back here to October so you can see what this would look like. But once you have the calendar view up and you've got cards with due dates, you can see how they're displayed over a month view or over a weekly view. 
And um, you can still access the cards from this calendar this way. So it might be a great way that if you're running a Zoom meeting with your parents, um, have this board displayed in the weekly view, and then you can walk through each item by day. It's a nice visual uh, reminder of the timeline. And you can also, um, you can also create cards from the calendar view, so you don't have to click back out. That's a, just kind of a shortcut feature that I like. You just double click on the day, click add a card, and then you can go ahead and add something right from there. All right, so I'm talking about having parents in your Trello board and you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, this would be chaos. Like, I can't let the parents in here. They're gonna comment on everything. They're gonna move everything. I'm gonna do all this work to make this a beautiful board and then they're just gonna come in and wreck it. Here's the great thing about business class. You can have enhanced permissions. So you as the Trello board owner become the admin of that board and then you can design um, the permissions for different people. So I'm going to sh quickly show you how this works. So if I invite Ronnie to this board, um, I can add her and then I can actually add design what status she has. So she can be added as a member. A member of a board can do everything um, that you would do in terms of interacting with the board. So editing cards, commenting, that kind of thing but she can also be added as an observer. An observer is a great status for parents. So they can see the board, um, but they can also comment on cards and that's it. So they can't move cards around, they can't delete things, but you can use the comment function on the back side of the card as kind of a, uh, an ongoing chat with parents. So be like, um, does Billy need to bring? his own sheet music. So this could be like a question that um, a, a parent can put in. They can actually choose to watch this card for updates and they'll be updated whenever anybody answers this. Um, but if I also then re responded to the parent and take them as an at mention at Leah, yes, um, they will also be notified that there's been uh, an answer to their question. Again, um, for admin permissions, it's all in this right hand area, which has tons of things in it. It's under settings. And then you have permission settings here that you can, um, you can designate. Okay, so that is parents. I want to quickly um, shift over to the function of something like this for internal. So for you and the other teachers and for the faculty and staff. And we call this Team Organization Central. Um, this is a board that we use a lot here at Trello. Um, this is pretty much an exact copy of the marketing one that we use. And as a team manager myself, this board is super important for keeping tabs on what's happening across our team and having a place that we can all come and communicate with each other where it's not getting lost in long email chains or it's not getting missed in a bunch of Slack messages or something else or some documents that I can't see. So Team Organization Central has a couple things that I really love. First of all, we always have a list on the left-hand side for all of our team members. Right now, since we're all from working from home and we're in different locations, it can be a really great place to have details around your phone number, <laughs> maybe the schedule that you're running because you also have kids and you're teaching kids, but you're homeschooling your own kids and your schedule is a little bit different than normal. Um, we just add the name of the person. Maybe you can add which grade uh, you're teaching, put the avatar on each one for that person and then add details in the back of the card. We do birthdays and hobbies because we like to, um, you know, it helps when we buy birthday gifts for each other, do nice things for each other, it's personalized. And I'll show you how you would make one of these with using Ronnie, again, as my guinea pig. So we would add Ronnie's name, we would add her title. Oh, this is it, that's right, this is the template. Of course, we would add her title and then it's simple as tagging her on the card. So let's do that again. 
media manager. So I come in here and we say add to card. And then I would search members, add Ronnie. She's now tagged on the card. This is another, if you're working on a team board for projects, you absolutely want to be assigning cards to members to assign who's in charge of what task. Once someone is tagged on a card like this, they get notified that now they are the owner of that card and they'll get all notifications related to that card. All right, moving on. A couple other great lists that we love on here. Resources. You know, it's really, all those things get lost. Like, where are the permission slips? that I need to download for my classroom. What is the um, order date for like new snacks for the faculty room if you get snacks, I'm not sure. Um, you can add all those resources to one place so it's really handy to find them. So you can stop ask, answering the same questions over and over. FAQs are another great place to do that. We often find on our team, the same kind of questions come up. When is that meeting again? Who do we usually call if this thing is broken? You can add those on here and it just saves, uh, puts all that knowledge in place and saves all of those consistent questions. Theme schedule. This one is great. You can put vacation on here, add it to the calendar. You can also put um, what people are doing week to week on a quick checklist. It's just a really handy way to have visibility into where everyone is and what they're, what they're working on. Projects in progress is one thing, obviously, as a marketing team we do, but I think this could be a really great place to add a card for like each grade. So you could be like grade six, Madame Kelly, who was my teacher because I was in French immersion. And then you could attach here the board for your lesson plan. Um, I'll show you what happens if you attach a board. So if I have another board link, I just drag it over onto the card and it auto populates link to that board. So you can keep open communication about which boards you're using and um, where the project work is happening. Okay, that's what I had for this board, but I remembered I promised to show you about Google, the Google Power Up. So let's take a look at the Power Ups directory once more. So we have a few different ones. The Google Drive Power Up is our main one. We also have Hangouts and Hangouts chat. When you add the Google Drive Power Up, there are some settings that you do need to set up. But once you have it um, added, in the right-hand side of the card will list all of your active Power Ups. When you open the Google Drive Power Up, you have a different few different options, which I really love. You can create and attach new Google files. You can attach, or you can attach files or folders. And this works for, um, for documents, it works for slides, um, and it will uh, populate not just like a link, but it also populate kind of a, a view of the of the actual file itself. So it's it's pretty handy. All right, last but not least for me, um, I have a, on good authority that I'm sure you are doing weekly meetings both with your parents and with uh, your staff. And you can use the same template for both, which is really handy. The bit.ly, interesting, okay. I think I have it on hand. Weekly team meetings. This is an exact copy of a board that at Trello, again, we use it every week for our weekly meetings. Um, we keep a log of every meeting that's happened. And then when it's time for a new meeting, we just use a template list. This one here, we hit copy list. I'll add in the week, which is, you know, week of April 27th. And it creates the new list with all of the cards. Then every week we assign someone who's going to lead the meeting. The reason we do this is it keeps someone who's watching the time, keeping up pace, organizing um, the different items in the meeting, just generally keeping a good flow. 
We also assign a scribe, someone who can take notes for anyone who wasn't available, and you can just keep notes right in the cards themselves. Then we open it up to the team and people from the team will come in every week and say, you know what, I wanted to do an update on, uh, we have a project, so I wanna do a TGIF project update. And they'll put that into the meeting agenda, take themselves, they might um, attach a project update and then we build the agenda from there. Now you can use this with your parents. You could build meeting agendas week to week. You can also use this for faculty. I think it would work in both options really well. And um, one thing that we do with our team, which I just want to point out, is make some time for Bravos. We do this every week. We just have a standing card so we remember and we take a little bit of time every weekly meeting to thank each other for uh, the help, maybe some extra help they did that we weren't expecting or if they had a really good result, you want to point that out to the team, but it's just a nice addition that we have to every meeting to kind of end the, the meeting on a high note. All right, so I will stop talking for a few minutes and pass it back over to Ronnie. Um, she's going to share more resources with you um, based on all these templates and everything that we've just talked about. Perfect, thank you. We also had some amazing questions, so do not be shy, like highly impressed. Okay. So next we're gonna talk about, as promised, um, resources. So um, yes, that is my face. I'm not just a narcissist and showing this to you. Um, our blog has a bunch of resources. It's just blog.trello.com um, and so this one I love, and I'll give you the link later. It's just, you sign up for Trello, what now? So this is a very 101, um, which is lists, cards, going into the basic architecture of a Trello board. And if you're more of a video learner, tutorial learner, we do have a YouTube um, channel where we have a bunch of um, Trello board tutorials. So it, again, goes through the beginnings of what a Trello board is, um, and currently we have uh, four up there on um, how templates work, how notifications work. And we do have more coming up and we're happy to take suggestions on what you'd like to see. So let's go to YouTube and search, search for Trello. You'll see our tutorials on there. Um, they're brand new and I'm very proud of them. So um, please check those out. Um, Power-ups are, um, like I said, some integrations you can have with your boards and with the BC free trial for teachers currently, you have access to all of them. And so this blog post is very new and it's great for a remote team, which is what we all are right now. And um, that link will come shortly. And last but definitely not least, of our hundreds of blog posts, um, how to close the digital divide with Trello and email. So this one is about, you know, if you, if you yourself are loving Trello um, and your colleagues, um, not so much. They're still stuck in different forms of communica communication. It's not a bad thing by any means, but it is difficult to make sure people are on the same board or page. And um, this kind of helps with communication, how to get everybody using the same tool. So here they are. I just have the bit.ly links if you want to copy and paste those. Um, otherwise, all of these, except for the YouTube uh, tutorials, are at blog.trello.com. So highly recommend. Um, our blog I'm very proud of, um, also because that is what Leah and I work on. But um, again, blog.trello.com, we have productivity, workflows, remote work, which is new and I think so crucial, and then Trello News. Um, a lot of the, some of the Q and A um, actually asked a lot about how to collaborate better or how to make kind of a knowledge base. Um, we do go through that, and actually, a lot of our most up to date um, Trello boards. So definitely check this out. Um, async meetings, like Leah just talked about, is a big one. Finding popular Trello templates is a big one. Um, this was a fun one we just did. A carbon footprint that'd be a really great one to kind of like interact with the classroom for Earth Day. That was really fun. So Definitely, definitely, definitely our blog, huge resource. And as promised, we'll walk through our templates. So it's trello.com backslash templates. And somebody had asked, you know, if you have higher education templates, we most definitely do. Um, and all of, I mean, most of these, I mean, a lot of them are made by Trello employees because we use this in our personal life as well as professional life. But I would say most of these are actually made by our users and they just wanted to share what they're doing. So 
even within this, we have, we have some education templates and we have so many. Um, we actually have a post coming out next week in honor of Teacher Appreciation Week. And we talk about a lot of these, um, whether you are a parent or an educator who is focusing on homeschool or tutoring um, all the way to project-based learning to, you know, even if you're a music teacher, you're, you know, you're still an educator. So we have so many in here that can be applied to higher ed, you know, preschool, any, any type of organization you need. Um, I'm just going to go into the personal templates because I think we all definitely have a personal life right now and it's important to acknowledge that we might need some sort of organization. So this one comes to mind, book clubs, you know, um, this could even be a great activity to do with parents, like having books that you recommend. Um, the newsletter template that Leah showed, it's not just for the formalities, right? You can use this for spreading projects and ideas. Um, I feel like as educators, you really are the authority on like the education for your students. So this can really help families. Um, this is Leah's, her holiday Christmas planner, which actually is wonderful. So go through this. Um, it's just a really fun time. I'm personally planning a wedding on Trello currently. So first of all, knock on what it happens. <laughs> and second of all, it's just a really easy way to get started. So trello.com backslash templates. Um, please, please, please go there. It is absolutely wonderful. And then last but totally not least, we have this beautiful, amazing guide um, that we've worked with you know, like top companies around the globe. It's trello.com backslash remote work guide. And it's like this comprehensive, it's basically a text. It's a, it's a book um, all about the best practices for setting up a team. So this is really more applicable for your colleagues and staff and admin. So no matter where you are in the education ladder, this is actually just a wonderful guide. And this is not teacher focused, um, it's for everybody. So I encourage everyone to, to take advantage of that. Finally, questions. Um, I'll stop sharing now. And we we have a good question that came in. Yeah. So the question was, um, how can we go about managing boards over time? So examples like archiving, moving older past material to less important spots on the board. And I think this is an amazing question because we we have so much material in Trello. We spend a lot of time thinking about how to keep our boards clean. I'm like so pumped. I'm already like I'm pulling up different examples. <laughs> I'm going to say the one thing that I think is the first thing to know, which I really love with Trello. When you want to clean things right off the board, there's actually two options. One is archive, two is delete. When you archive things, they will disappear from view, but there is an archive section on the board that you can go back into and grab anything out of the archive whenever you need it. So I think there's sometimes there's like, um, there's like a hesitation to archive things because it feels like you're deleting them, but you're not. You can grab them and pull them back onto the board at any time, which is really great. Um, you can, of course, fully delete stuff if you need to, but I highly encourage people to get comfortable with the archiving function um, to keep the board clean. I wanted to add to that. Um, I will share my screen again. So we just had a blog post out about how to spring clean your workflows and your boards. So this is a great resource. I recommend going to it to search for the word spring on our blog and you'll, this will come up um, as well as the card aging power up. This one's like silly and amazing all in one. So as your cards get older, um, you can choose between pirate mode or just fading mode. Um, they will actually physically change appearance over time. So you know that those action items haven't been touched in whatever amount of time. So this is like a fun one. Um, it, you know, very, viscerally lets you know that you need to update some things. And we just got a question on the uh, offer, the education offer. So great segue. I'll actually show you the education page that we we're talking about. So trello.com backslash education. So Trello for educators. Um, sorry. Um, we have, again, a bunch of tools here. We have all the boards we talked about. Um, you can just click into them as well as the main thing, free Trello business class for teachers. So any sort of educator, go ahead, click this button, fill out the form, we'll be, and you'll, you'll be getting access to business class and highly, highly encourage it. You get to play with all the power-ups, a um, bunch of team permissions that come up. So um, 
please do check that out. I think we have a couple more questions. Uh, I think we've actually been fairly proactive and we've cleaned up the questions. Love that. Well, if anyone has any last minute questions, feel free to put them in now. And otherwise, we're moving forward very quickly to the end of Friday. Yeah. Is this being recorded? Can I access this after the fact if I didn't make it to this webinar? Yes, we are recording the webinar. And everyone who, um, who signed up initially for this webinar is going to get a copy of it, which can be great if you, because I know you all want to rewatch it, but you could also <laughs> send it and forward it on to other colleagues that you think might benefit from taking it to our Trello. Um, I had some, oh, we have actually a couple questions. Um, yeah, happy to answer those live. We have some time. So um, one of them, can I still apply for a Trello EDU? Um, your private English teacher. Yeah, so this offer is still available. Um, you can go ahead, uh, fill out that form at trello.com backslash education. Being a private English teacher, um, totally applicable for this. Just fill the form out. Um, you know, you'll more than likely be good to go. And we have any suggestions on how to transition into Trello for people unfamiliar with it? Yes, um, I'm always gonna redirect everyone to our blog. Um, I'll go back to the email divide blog. So I'll, do you have any other, you have a bunch of on these, don't we Leah? Like, is there one that comes to mind for you? The email divide one does, but. There's also the spreadsheets one. But I would say for, for people that are unfamiliar with Trello, um, we have a great intro to Trello video on our YouTube channel, which is just a couple minutes long um, to, uh, for training. And then, I mean, the good news with Trello is we do find that it's quite easy to get the, to get the hang of. So hopefully they'll get comfortable with it. But otherwise, I think just being a good steward of how to use it and sharing your best practices as you go along is really the best way to, to you know, like lead by example. Okay. Um, finally, there's a question about our business class pricing. So I guess I can answer this one. Um, our business class um, offer is priced out by user and it is $9.99 per month per user. So after the 12 months of free offer for educators is up, that's how much you would be wanting to budget um, for, for the cost of the, of the business class subscription. We offer, and then the second part of that question was an education discount. So we offer a nonprofit discount. Um, it's fairly significant. We do not have a education discount as it, as it stands currently. Great. And um, like we said, these resources will be available as well as this recording. So please share. Um, and seeing their teacher friends, colleagues, we really, really want people to take advantage of BC. And um, any questions, not saying this because I'm obsessed with our blog, but I really think 90% of them can be answered um, there. So take a look there and then follow us on Twitter um, or Instagram, whichever one. We're very active on both. So any questions, we either actually me or our team or our support does answer a lot of questions there as well. So don't be a stranger and yeah, we're just at Trello on Twitter and on Instagram, we're at Trello app. So we hope to see you all there. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you all so much, not just for attending, but for being amazing teachers. This is like a very weird time and what you're all doing is so important. And we're really honestly in awe of the work you're doing, um, keeping all your students engaged, keeping things moving in spite of all these obstacles. And we hope that this offer and all these templates can help ease your day in, in some small way. So you're doing great. Have a great weekend and thanks so much for coming. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.